form that you have to film from the back. Um, I never have problems filming. You know, in fact, this is the proper place to do it. Well, people just come up and I'll tell you that the facts are talking about. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. First matter before the court this morning is a matter of Matthew Phillips versus Matthew Schmidt. I could ask both the parties to stand and identify themselves for the record. Matthew Phillips, uh, JP. Matthew Schmidt. Okay, would you both uh, raise your right hands? Do you swear the testimony you give this morning is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Why don't we first, uh, I'll first hear from Mr. Schmidt on his motion to reconsider the earlier ruling, and then I'll hear from Mr. Phillips on the motion for contempt. Uh, so you can be, be seated, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Schmidt. Okay, thank you. I'd like to first of all, I thank you all for recognizing that I did not receive notice of the hearing on May 29th. I appreciate the opportunity today to share my side <clears throat> and hope that you uh, make a, uh, reconsider the decision following this hearing. If I may read, on April, Saturday, April 11th, 2000. Mr. Schmidt, before you go there, I just want to ask about the notice question, because you did file an objection, mm -hmm. and uh, it was my understanding from the clerk's office that you did actually, in fact, have notice of, of that hearing. Are you disputing that? Uh, yeah, I never received Trust me, I would have been there on that day if, I didn't, if, if my name isn't how were you able to file an objection if you had no notice of the fact that, that the motion for contempt had been filed uh, and the summons had been had been issued? How were you even aware of it to file an objection? I didn't. I, I don't know. I never found out. I never had. I never got any paperwork. I never received. Never submitted any paperwork to the to the, the hearing on that day. Because I have an objection from you dated. April 27th, with uh, it looks like you, you initialed uh, a document and attachment to that dated April 26th, 2015, and that's uh, a little over a month before the scheduled hearing. How did you know about 
the, the motion in order to file an objection. I have no answer for that. I really, I, I, all I know is that I did not, I would have, I would have shown up on an April, I'm sorry, on May 29th court hearing. If I, if I received it, I did not. Are you saying that the signature on, on and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the court officer to hand you uh, what has been labeled as an objection. I'm gonna ask if this is in fact a document that you signed and and submitted to the court on April 27th of this year. Uh, yes, it is. That's my signature. And, and I guess I'm gonna reiterate my question. This objection is is to uh, was was submitted a a summons and a motion for contempt issued by the court on April 20th, 2015. Uh, and and uh, this was, it, it appears that you're, you were responding to a motion for contempt filed by, by Mr. Phillips. And in fact, what you submitted at the end of April is responsive to that motion and that summons. Are you saying that you just did not know the date? No, if you're not, it only, only, only parties can respond. Yes. yes, absolutely. I did. But, uh, trust me, I would have been there on May 29th if I if I knew I you know, would have received enough time to take time off from work. I mean, my, my work, I need to let them know in advance that I'm taking time off. So I would have definitely. I, I guess what I'm asking yeah. is, are you saying that you may have received notice of it and somehow it fell through the cracks? Or are you saying you had no notice of it? I had no notice of it. Then how did you know to file an objection? If you never received it, how did you know that you, you should object to it? Well, it's April, right? And then, and then the court date was for May 29th? No, the court date was set on April 20th of 2015, which would have been a week before you filed your objection. And it's my understanding from the clerk's office that when you came in to file your objection, they, they again told you in person that the hearing was set for April, for, I'm sorry, May 29th, which was a date that you did not appear. Are you, are you disputing that you had notice of that hearing. Yes, I am. So, so, tell me how you received the motion for contempt. Um, you see my question. How did you know to respond to something if you never received it? That's a, again, that's a good question. I'm, I'm right on. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Because I'm going to first address the question of whether I'm even going to hear you on your motion for, for reconsideration. You really haven't given me a good explanation for why, how you would have known to respond to something uh, if you had never received notice of it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Mr. Phillips, do you object to the motion for reconsideration? Yes, I do, Your Honor. And, and uh, can you tell me how it is that you affected service on Mr. Mr. Schmidt of of the, the motion for contempt? I believe I received a, a packet in the mail, a packet from the clerk's office, and when I went to uh, come to the clerk's office to ask if I need to get him served, I think it, it was around the same day, it was actually the day of him coming in, and she explained to me that uh, he has notice of the hearing, and uh, she gave him notice and he filed that motion. In fact, I didn't get the motion uh, the objection in the mail I got it from the clerk's office because she said she filed it that day I actually saved her mail I guess I guess my, my question was was really about because one of the things that you were ordered to do was to was to have uh, mr. Schmidt served in hand with the, the summons and and the motion uh, that was something you were ordered to do can you tell me how it is that you made sure that mr. Schmidt knew about the hearing. What okay. steps did you take to make sure that he was served in hand? I, I was going to serve him that day. Um, in fact, I had the money for, for the uh, sheriff's department and everything, but I was satisfied with what the clerk told me that he had noticed. I didn't have to get him served. He filed the motion, the objection that very day, and um, I was just told by the court I didn't have to because he had noticed because he filed the objection that day. It was the same day I came in. It's the same day he came in. 
Thank you. Uh, and I'll take, I'll decide that that question about whether I'm even going to re reconsider the, uh, the the motion. It, Mr. Schmidt, you understand my 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 issue with with, with your with, with your request for reconsideration is uh, is it, it still is not clear to me how you could not have known of the motion for contempt and the hearing date if if you served your objection after the court scheduled the May 29th hearing. Because that was scheduled on April 20th, and you filed your your objection on April 27th, a week after uh, the date was set by the court. So it appears that you did have notice. Whether you missed it or you didn't understand what was going to happen, that date is a separate question from whether you actually had notice of it. And I take it you still dispute that you had any notice of, of that, that date. Okay. And while we move to the to the actual motion for contempt, the recent motion that, that uh, Mr. Phillips has filed, you can have a seat, Mr. Mr. Schmidt. We were, I had a, uh, a family hearing um, for parenting time. Um, it was a, just a review conference um, downstairs in front of Judge Forrest on the 29th of last month. And um, Mr. Schmidt and pretty much everybody behind him ended up showing up. Um, and uh, he was removed. Um, I guess he was asked by uh, Judge Forrest to leave the room. Um, there was a small explanation from his wife, Jennifer Schmidt, um, saying that I could mention something about them, or them meaning Stop Freaking. Um, they run a website um, called Stop Freaking. Well, any, anyways, uh, he wasn't satisfied with that answer and made, made him leave the room. Um, and I feel that the language that's in the, the restraining order is he needs to stay with me at all times uh, unless he's at his house. And he specifically was using the court process to be near me. Um, I don't know if it was in a harassing nature because I was trying to concentrate on what was going on. Other than his attendance in court that day, did you have any interaction yeah. with him? Not any interaction, but I do have uh, evidence showing that he was, he's been following me. This was done, uh, I believe, Saturday. Um, I found this message on the side. If you should, I did. <laughs> and that message was on an open network, not a closed network. Okay. Marked as an exhibit? Yes, Your Honor. Plans to exhibit one for purpose. And I also have a witness here uh, that uh, can uh, testify to uh, Mr. Schmidt driving by 75 Leopard Street where I'm known to frequent, um, blaring his horn and using a, uh, an electronic bowl horn, they call it, I guess, battery powered bowl horn. Um, yelling things like get a job, peeling out, and driving dangerously, and just causing just causing the same type of disturbance that brought the case to the court to begin with. It doesn't seem to be stopping. Why not this raises a, a, a new allegation, uh, really it's, it sounds like the, the claim relates to something that took place Couple, within a couple of weeks. Oh, we could so I, really, after after you filed the motion. Yes, sir. It, it's just I, I want to bring it before the court because um, I, I really it's boggling to me that an adult do such really strange behavior. And now uh, we have uh, I'm, I'm part of an organization called CallBlock.org. We push for uh, police accountability. Um, I'm sure you're familiar. 
Um, I'm not usually, I don't usually do the same stuff that Free Keen and, and Free Staters do. I just do Cock Block and that's it. I mean, I do it all over the state, Littleton, New Hampshire, all the way down to Rhode Island. But uh, we had a national chalk the police day, you know, you just say some things. And it, it's very, you know, it's peaceful, nothing, nothing really bad. And I saw him driving by me at least six times that day, over and over and over again. Um, it's not just one drive by, but it's two, three, four, and I have a witness here that can attest to that as well.